like to do is give you some examples of the different ways that various parts of NASA will use modeling and simulation and some of the real life type things that we have used to go do this kind of work. Um, so the first one is for developing concepts. Concepts are where we get to use our imagination. They're where we get to say, okay, what could this thing go be? What could it go look like? What could it go do? And so when Congress says, hey, NASA, you're going back to the moon, we go, awesome. What do we need to go put there? And so we start putting together concepts. The picture on the screen, the upper one, that has the two little rovers in it, was from a concept of what we could do on the moon. And so the little rovers with the six wheels are space exploration vehicles. And the spidery looking thing is something we call athletes that they're building out at JPL. And it's got a thing we call the pressurized excursion module on the back of it, which is really just a fancy name for a habitat, someplace people are going to go live. And we're showing that we could put all of these pieces together and they would be able to go move around the moon and go work together to help us meet our objectives and perform some science and, and all of those kinds of things while we're there. Now, when the president says, you know what, I think I want you guys to go to an asteroid first, we go, okay, we can do that too. And we take what we learn from the other concepts we developed and we look at ways to adapt them into something we could use for this new mission. So if you look at the little tick looking thing, I call it the tick and I'm probably going to get in trouble for that, floating over Earth, what they took was the cab of those rovers in the moon picture and adapted it so that it could go fly around freely in space. And so now we call this thing the multi-mission space exploration vehicle and it gets a whole new acronym of its own and it can go do different missions that don't necessarily require it to go beyond the surface. When we do these concepts, they're not always very detailed. We can show how stuff is moving around and approximately what it looks like, but we don't have a lot of math data behind it. There's not much that's true to life. We're just kind of making it up and showing what it could look like. So when we get through the concept phase, the next phase that we go into is analysis. And this is where we start putting some of the numbers behind what we're doing. And this is where we start picking out some different parts or, or different possible ways that the spacecraft could go be put together. So if you look at the picture that's over on, I think it would be your left, where the line's kind of coming down, that's showing two different pieces descending to the moon. And what it gives us an idea of is when they go come down and separate, how far apart do they go from each other? Where do they land relative to each other? And the other neat thing we can do is that the little pointy thing sticking up there is actually a model of the Empire State Building. And by putting that in there, we can get a better idea for just how big everything on the moon is because we can look at pictures of it, but with nobody being there and with nothing to give us an idea of size, it, it's kind of hard to understand. And so if you look at the Empire State Building, you can see that it's about the size of that little rill, which is just a fancy name for a moon trench. But the little rill down there, you could fit the whole Empire State Building in there. Uh, and this is the scope of, of what we're looking at on the moon, how big everything is, as we're exploring these things, which is why some of the pictures that come back of the stuff on the moon, you can't really see what we sent there because it's so small in comparison to everything else. One of the other examples is on the other side, we've got two rovers that are running around and we give them different parameters for their power systems. And so by running these two rovers against each other, we can understand how far they can travel with the battery power that they have, and that lets us go plan out our mission a little better. We know what's reasonable in trying to go push the rovers from one place to the next, what we can realistically accomplish in a day, and we can also see how they can move over the terrain to make sure that they're not going to go someplace that they can't go or they're not going to get stuck or, or those kinds of things. So that's really where the analysis comes in. It's looking at the models and looking at the numbers and going, okay, how realistic is this? Can we really go take this concept and actually go make something of it? Now, the next phase, which, you know, depending on where you are, you know, it, we, can, we don't have to do this stuff in this order, but these are the basic things that we're doing. And the next one that's really important is planning. And for us down at Kennedy, this one is huge because 
we need to know what to do with everything we're getting. We need to know where to do it. We need to know in what order to do it. We need to know what equipment can go do it. I mean, there are a whole bunch of questions. And going back to before, we don't necessarily have these pieces before they go show up for the first time. So if you look at some of the pictures we have here, we've got an upper stage for the Ares-1 rocket. And we're lifting it in the VAB to make sure that we can go pick it up, that when it moves, it's not going to hit something that it's not supposed to. And we can look at the different things that we're going to perform on that piece of the rocket when it comes in before we go pick it up and stack it with the rest of the vehicle. The really big picture is actually the Orion spacecraft. This is the one that's going to go carry people. And this is in the facility where we need to go service that piece of hardware. And the thing that's really interesting to me about this is that all of the little work stands and pallets, what it's sitting on, all of the things around it don't actually exist right now. And they're not going to exist, but they have to be there when this capsule shows up. And so by doing the simulation and looking at how we need to go work with the pieces we're getting, it also helps us go design all of the support equipment that we need to make sure that we can go perform this work. So at the same time that you have engineers designing rockets and finding creative ways to go carry out the mission that we've been given, you also have another set of engineers that are looking at all of the different things you need to even make that possible here on the ground. And I had no idea just how much work it took into getting a mission ready until I got down here to Kennedy. It, it really kind of blew me away, just how smart everybody was to have figured out what they needed. And some of it is trial and error because you can't always simulate everything and you can't capture every problem. But the way that they can go take something like the Constellation program, like Ares, like Orion, that didn't exist and actually make it look and feel like this is going to go be real, it is pretty amazing. One of the other things that it lets us do, if you look at the little picture on the bottom, you see the guys kind of floating off the work stand a little bit. This was one we did to show that the people who were designing the rocket needed to rethink some things they were doing. So we'd get the vehicle out to the pad, and they said, we need somebody to go and reach into this panel and go perform some work. And we said, OK. And when we put all the models into our little simulation environment and had him go do that work, he couldn't reach it. And so we had to go back to them and say, this isn't going to work. If you expect this to go happen at the pad, if you really need somebody to go do this, you're going to need a really tall technician to go do it. And it's not going to be really easy to go find one. So they can go take that information from us, who are doing all the groundwork, and feed that into the designs for their vehicles. And so what happens is we get a more serviceable spacecraft out of the deal because we know that when we actually have to go perform the work, we have a greater chance of everything being someplace that we can reach it, um, someplace that we can see it, that we don't have a platform going this way and the door you need to reach being out here. And so it helps us do some of that work as well to go plan for the stuff that goes and comes in.